is Louise Brown. And she read a lot. Between 1946 and 2009, she borrowed and read 12 books a week, every week from her favorite library, almost finishing all of the books there. That's over 25,000 of them. Even at 91, when her eyesight was impaired, she just picked books with larger text. Now, that's absolutely incredible. And while Louise said that she just loved reading a lot, so many of us struggle with finding the motivation, time and technique to consistently make reading a habit. We've made a routine of leaving people, but not books, unread. And so to rectify this, here are four mistakes that you may be making when it comes to becoming an effective book reader. I'm going to talk about what we read, how we read, how we structure our life around reading and how we approach the actual books that we're using. So let's jump straight in. The first mistake is reading a single book at a time. And this is so bizarre to me. It's almost like being forced to eat the same thing for breakfast, lunch and dinner every single day, which you would just get so bored of at some point. Even when we were in school, we were reading multiple books slowly at once. There was a physics book and a maths book and a biology book and a chemistry book. And we were able to kind of continue paying attention to all of these. Or for example, there are so many people in our lives and we remember exactly what going on in the trajectory of theirs and what's happening to them all at the same time. I don't know why, we seem to have this impression sometimes that we should only read a single book at a time. If you want to make it more likely that you do something and hopefully that you enjoy that thing, it's much easier to make it something that is more pleasurable. Bertrand Russell in his essay A Praise of Idleness said that good nature, so being able to do something positively, is a result of enjoying the process rather than continuous struggle. How this translates to reading for me is that at different times of the day or the week I have a different sort of mood or vibe and if I have just one single book that I have to finish, I might just not be in the mood for reading that book rather than not being in the mood for reading at all. Any given time in my life, I always have one good business book, one bad business book, one philosophy book, one good psychology book, one bad psychology book, one good non-fiction book, one bad non-fiction book, Harry Potter and sometimes a science book just running in the background as options that I can pick from. Oh, and also sometimes a book that someone else will have recommended to me that might be quite random. This is R. At any given time, I will be in the mood for reading at least one of these books. Books. As Tiago Forte says, the scarcest resource is interest and desire. So having interest at any time for reading is the most key thing that you need to latch on rather than something specific that you're forcing yourself to do. In a study of people who are prolific writers, Luffman found that many of them were working on multiple manuscripts at a time. So they said that they were never not in the mood for writing, they would just switch onto something else. So they had almost infinite sources of energy. And I find that reading multiple books at once and picking the one that you are in the mood for at the moment makes it much more likely that you read in general rather than thinking, hmm, I'm not in the mood for reading that one book, so I must not be in the mood for reading at all. The second mistake I see made quite often is reading a good book only once. And this to me is the equivalent of listening to an amazing song once and going, oh, I'm never going to hear that again, rather than saving it to your Spotify like songs and listening to it on repeat again and again and again. Even though life itself is quite fleeting, as Friedrich Nietzsche said, we are destined to play this world only a passing visit, a gracious reminder of life rather than life itself. But books give us the opportunity to reapproach life, not in this fast fleeting way, but in a slow, reappreciating way that gives us the space to rethink and re-see things again and again and again. Also what I've realised is that I almost never read the same book twice because the book is reading me as much as I am reading it. What that means is I'm always a different person and what I get from the book is what I think about it rather some objective truth that is in the book itself. So because I change so much and because I grow so much or just because I'm in a different mood or in a different mindset it's almost a different person that reapproaches the same book every time and if there's something great or incredible in it it's so worth going back to it again and again and always getting new things from the book. Proust put this perfectly when he said, one cannot read a novel without describing to the heroine the traits of the one that we love. So we are always reading books with our own lens and that lens continuously changes. It's also pretty crazy how long it actually takes to write a good book and there are months or years or decades sometimes of someone's life that just get condensed in something that I decide to read in five hours which is just crazy. Obviously I'm not taking everything from it but if you are someone who likes to read quite a lot then if you find something good it's good to reapproach it and see what else you may have missed there. Often I like to approach books like old friends and I like to catch up with them and kind of get reminded of who I was the last time that I read the book and see how much I've grown and take more from it. Or in the opposite end, I can sometimes use books to ground me to the person that I want to be or the thing that I want to do. So I can use them either as a constant or as a growth method. But either way, reapproaching books is just so underrated. The next mistake I see being made quite often is not taking notes from books. And now I feel really passionately about note taking. And I do not mean just underlining things, writing things or taking notes from books for the purpose of those notes, if that makes sense. There's so many companies out there I love short form for example but there's so many different things that already kind of 
shorten down books and take notes from books and everything is on quotes on Google and stuff, there's no point in rewriting things down or resaving things or highlighting things for absolutely no reason. What I mean by note taking is actually the action of approaching the book in a more intentional sort of way. And for example, thinking what are the projects in my life that I am currently working on for which I would want more information or how am I trying to change myself or what am I trying to grow or what am I trying to do? So let's say for example that I think that I'm a bit insecure and I want to become a more confident person. I might use this lens when I'm reading a book to see either confident characters or characters who become more confident and see what are their attributes, what are their traits and how have they grown and why do I think that they are shaped in this way and what can this say about me? So these will be the kind of notes that I will be taking from books, understanding more about other people in the world because books will have so much more description and explanation about them and in that way understanding more about why I am the way that I am. I will almost always approach books and especially note taking from books in the way that how can this change my life and how can this reshift or change my perspective on things? How is this different to how I currently see the world or how does this confirm the way that I currently see the world? The last mistake is a slightly controversial one and that is not being able to speed read or not using speed reading sometimes in books. Now I feel both ways about this. For example Proust did say which means an advantage of not going too fast is that the world has a chance of becoming more interesting in the process and I do recognize that there is so much need for kind of meditation and slow approach to things that we are doing in life in this time of kind of like rushing 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 but what I mean by speed reading is using it as a superpower that will get you through those parts of the books that would have otherwise made you close the book and never read it again. It's almost guaranteed that there will be parts of a book that are just not taking your interest at the time and that mean that either you fall asleep or that you switch to another activity or that you just decide that this book is horrible and you never want to see it again. If you could speed read, you could go through these parts of the book a lot faster and then either think, oh my god, this was actually really interesting, I'm going to reread this again slowly, or realise that, oh no, it's getting good again, or then realise, oh no, this is definitely not for me and then leave the book at all. But having the ability to speed read makes this a much more effective and likely opportunity. So many times I've talked to people who say that they want to read more, but they're in the middle of the book that they started three years ago, but the book was too slow and uninteresting, so they never finished it. And I thought, well, if they could just speed read the chapter that they're finding boring, then they could get Get to the more interesting part without losing any part of comprehension. So if you want to learn more about this skill actually I have a video that I made recently on how I speed read but that might be a skill that if you have it in your repertoire of how to read in general. Now I did mention that I sometimes do read science books in order to keep in touch with the STEM subjects but another thing that I love to do to get the same kind of information is to use Brilliant which are very kindly sponsoring this video. Brilliant helps us learn using interactivity which is so unique and different to anything else that I've been using before. I'm currently doing the everyday math science which is very basic things but they're approached very differently and sometimes I will be honest I still do make some mistakes but it's a great way for me to reapproach and reassess subjects that I may not have thought about in quite a long time. The fun exercises makes it much more interactive and much more likely that I am sparking both curiosity and creativity actually that spills into other aspects of my life too. If you also want to check out Brilliant with me, the first 200 people who will click the link in the description will get a 20% off the yearly subscription or you can just check it out in the meantime. As a last note, I just want to say I don't think there's a right or wrong way of reading but if you made it so far, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Be kind to yourself and others and don't believe everything you think. Thanks. Bye!